Sometimes there is no silver lining to losing games. Sometimes the silver lining can be that you do learn something. And if I'm the Philadelphia Phoenix, I'm wondering if we're a case of the former or the latter. While it may help you learn how close or far you are from a title, playing the New York Empire and the DC Breeze three of your first four weeks of the season is an absolutely brutal schedule for the Phoenix. There is no worse schedule through four games in the entire league. And it would be totally fair if the Philadelphia Phoenix threw up their hands at this point in the season and said, how can we possibly salvage an 0-3 start in the division that could turn to 0-4 if you lose to the Empire? They have to get the bitter taste of being up against, then losing to Boston to go 0-3 out of their mouths as quickly as possible, because an upset over the Empire at home would certainly put their season back on track. For the Empire, the real consideration against the Phoenix is to not have any emotional letdown whatsoever after the overtime win against DC, which was probably the most emotional game. No offense to Championship Weekend, and obviously winning is the whole thing, but an emotional letdown and then having to play another game since the playoffs against DC last year. If you're Jeff Babbitt, you probably deserve a rest. Seven goals and three blocks and huge play after huge play that won't show up on the box score with the gravity some deserved. But there is no rest for the Empire, at least not this week. The game at Philly in Philadelphia leads into a week off, but then it's the first doubleheader weekend of the season against Boston and Montreal in a trip that's looking a lot more difficult with Boston's 2-0 start. But back to the question at hand, what has the Philadelphia Phoenix learned? For that 17-8 loss in the monsoon to the Empire for the opener, I called that game and I can tell you that no one learned a thing other than the new pool rule gets 1000% more complicated when the weather is telling you to get inside and wrap yourself in a warm blanket. Whether Roger Chu and Tom Glass looked at that tape afterwards or not, they clearly did the right thing either way, because they were ready for the challenge of the DC Breeze, on the road no less. Against the Breeze, a 5-3 third quarter helped bring them back into the game before falling short in the fourth. James Pollard missing out on the chance for the full field huck as time expired at a 2019 loss. I don't know if a DC player said something or what happened, but Greg Martin was absolutely awakened for that second half, ending the game with five goals, an assist, and a block. Mott, meanwhile, has been plagued with turnovers this year, because without them, he's been as important and influential as ever. Philly was just below the breeze in almost every counting matchup in the game, proving just how small the margin can be if Philly is finding their way. Against Boston, we'll credit Shagri Sagris for this, he wondered out loud if Philly was going to have trouble dealing with those big receivers in Orion Cable and Tenor Hulk Yard. And he was right. They combined for seven goals in the game and created a ton of space for Boston's offense, just by existing as gigantic threats. Ben Sidok's ability to get off Hucks in small throwing windows made those power position situations even more nervy for Philly. Former Breeze player Justin Keller's defense on Sadok and against DC the week prior has been a real bright spot this season, as has been Eric Whitmer's work on the opposing team's primary initiating cutter. The offense for Philadelphia has had about five of their 12 quarters so far be what I would consider a success, but that's not good enough to get it done in a very tough East division. But three weeks in, while it may be difficult to tell you what Philly learned, I'll tell you what I've learned about Philadelphia. Max Trafillis is a name that casual AUDL fans need to learn yesterday. And he's been Philly's MVP this season, and it hasn't been close. He had a huge grab against New York in week one, led the Phoenix with a plus nine of one goal, four assists, and four blocks against DC, led the team again with a plus five of two goals, two assists, and one block against Boston. He had zero turnovers in those two games and almost 500 yards of total offense, while playing the majority of his points on defense. With Philly's record just about in desperation mode already, we could see a bunch more O points for him in the very near future, especially with CJ Colicchio out for an indefinite amount of time. Not only is Trefillis leading the Phoenix in assists, blocks, and plus minus, four goals, seven assists, and five blocks, a plus 16, but the jump from last year is already incredible. Six goals, 12 assists, and 11 blocks, a plus 24 last year. He's already over halfway to most of those metrics. And to think, this is a player that joined the Philadelphia Phoenix last season after being cut from a few teams in the DC area, having gone to college at UMBC. So he made the two and a half hour trek up to the city of brotherly love. And most players around the league may need to ask for his car ride playlist, because whatever he's listening to, wherever he's eating, whatever he's doing, is certainly working in 2023. Being the second and potentially last meeting with the Philadelphia Phoenix this season, the Empire know what the task at hand is. Put together four quarters of high level quality ultimate that you know that you can play, you can head out of Philadelphia with another victory under your belt, get that 4-0 record, stay undefeated, and head into the bye week able to not have too much to think about. And there's not much more outside of that. And for more on that DC game that I didn't really talk about too much here in the review, former Empire handler Matt Pippen, Aleta and I discussed that. So check that out wherever you get your podcasts or your videos, whatever it is, you know where to find it. And because we're on the road for a while, that being the Empire, 
I don't get to say see at the stadium for a few more weeks, but at least here on the channel, we'll see you soon.